Hey, this is Siphon. Today we're gonna create this on trigger rock falling mechanic in Godot. And when it hits the player, the level resets. So let's go into the engine. I already created a basic player and a collision polygon to D. Make it visible under the debug lock so you don't need any assets or tile map for the ground. The player can run and jump. It has a sprite, a collision shape and a camera that follows. So for creating the rock, let's now create a new scene with a node to D and call it Falling Rock. Then we will need a sprite just for the placeholder. I think it's fine when we go also with the Godot icon, the standard Godot icon. The next thing is going to be the area 2D. This is going to be the trigger area. We of course also need a collision shape 2D for this. And then I just duplicate the thing because we will also need a kill box and its own collision shape. So let's rename the first one trigger area and the second one to kill box. So that's for the node setup. Don't forget to save. And what now? Oh yeah, setting up the collisions. So I'm going for a rectangle form with the trigger area. Go there or scale it as you please. I want a relative big area so the rock will react before it's directly under the player. That makes the obstacle more da dangerous. And then we will need a kill box collision. This will match or roughly match the size of the rock. Yeah, be a little bit more generous. So I'm leaving a little space or make it a little bit smaller than the sprite itself. Yeah, that, that's better. Okay, now that we got this, I think we just need one more thing. This is a timer. So we want to avoid the rock is falling forever when falling. So it will self-destruct itself after X seconds. So yeah. Um, let's do on the self-destruct timer a wait time for five seconds and enable one shot. Save it. And yeah, I want to check the collision layers and mask to be sure it detects the player, which is on mask one. Let's give layer three for the trigger area. And the collision, uh, the kill box could be four. So we have three and four. Let's check the player. It has the mask two, two, two to four. Two is the ground. And yeah, let's start doing the code. Okay, let's start with some variables. We start with the export var fall speed. This is determining the falling speed of the rock. You can play around with that later. And we will also need the var is falling. This is also, ah, I forgot. This one is a float. And we will need the var is falling bool. which is a false. This is for checking is the rock currently falling or not. Yeah, we need to reference some stuff. So we are starting with the kill box. You can drag and drop it. 
that's relatively easy in Godot. We will need some other references. Of course, we want to also reference the trigger area. So this one and the timer. So yeah, self understood self underscore destruct underscore timer and then the referencing. Okay, yeah, for self destruction, if you want to. Because if we, yeah, maybe spam these rocks or use them very often, they are like falling forever. So we want to make sure they disappear from the scene at some point. Yeah, I'm checking the groups here under the inspector, then go to note. You can see if the player is in the group player. Otherwise, you can create one with the plus icon and you see also an icon next to the script. A rectangle with the circle in it. That's a sign that the player is in some group. You will need it for the following parts here. And also for part two of the video, which is releasing later. So let's do the function for the physics process. If is falling, global underscore position dot y. Yeah, I need a plus here and an equal sign. Fall speed times delta. And let me think. Um, we, we use a new function here now. Oh no. Uh, let's, let's connect the signal here. So I'm selecting the trigger area. Go to the node tab on the right and connect with the body entered node to D. You can connect the signal as it is. And then you, you see it on the little icon, the door arrow icon that it's connected now. If body is in group. And now we want to make sure it's player inside here. Yeah. Let's do some printing here just for debugging. If the um, player is detected correctly, then the rock is gonna fall. So we will need our variable is falling and setting it to true. And then we will mention here also the self destruct timer start. So it should start then. Moving on to the signal body entered node 2D for the kill box. Yeah, let's connect it. And replace it with our own code. So yeah, if body is in group, go for the player group 2 here. Then let's do a print for the debugging player hit by rock reset level. So making sure this is gonna work here. Reset level. Yeah. We will write uh, the function just directly down under it, but first we want to connect the timeout on the timer signal. So yeah, let's type the code for that in here. Let's do a print as always with signals. The rock, yeah, remove from the scene. And yeah, Q3, you can type. 
And now we will need the function for resetting the level. Which is also relatively easy. So, yeah. Get, we can type here underscore tree. Let's do dot reload current scene. Okay, something is still wrong. It, ah, a misspelling. Yeah, destruct. So now it works. And let's, yeah, let's go to the world tab or the level tab. And yeah, we want to drag the rock just right into the scene. To see if it works and let's test this thing yeah it's falling through the ground it's falling on trigger that's correct yeah but the speed is really slow let's let's make it a little bit faster does not feel like a falling rock okay that's that's a little bit better maybe Yeah, let's make it even faster. So I'm tapping 600 here and let's see now. Yeah, that's good. So you see, when the player is hit, it resets the level. There we go. It works. Hope you liked it. Bye bye.